Hey guys, how's it going? Marcelo here. Welcome to episode 5 of the Bandicast post-launch. Uh, we have a new guest here, newcomer, awesome guest. Um, oh boy, if you've been in the space with uh, Crash and Spyro ever since, like over a decade ago, um, he's been around, uh, me, Jared, Jeremiah, uh, he's up there too. He's got Let's Plays, analysis videos, discussion videos, and much more. Huge Crash and Spyro fan. With me today is Crystal Fisher. Hello. Hello everyone, Crystal Fisher here. It's uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be with you, Destination Mark. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this is this is our first time ever speaking. So as you as you see, um, I'm I'm being professional and calling you Destination Mark and not just Mark. You know, <laughs> no. it's it's very formal, very formal <laughs> environment, as you can tell. Um, you know, I'm all, I'm, maybe I'll call you Sir a bit later too. Oh Jesus! Please Thank you, don't. Sir. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no but great thank you very much for having me i'm really looking forward to it oh no problem thanks for wanting to be on it was really cool of you yeah no this is great like two crash fans um shooting talking <laughs> exactly relaxing drink i'm drinking a coffee i don't know what you're drinking i don't know if you're drinking anything but nothing <laughs> okay well I'll, I'll drink a, i'll drink a coffee on your behalf it's, oh, it's, it's the morning for me right now well actually it's sort of mid-morning sort of lunchtime so uh yeah Nice. Australian mate. <laughs> now time zones are crazy, man. But I'm glad that we were able to do this. Uh, yeah, of course. Thankfully, I'm not too tired right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. No, but yeah, seriously, just being in that space at the time. We were talking a little bit about it before recording. It's, it's it was wild, man. Just all the speculation for Crash before Insane dropped, and all of like the rumors and the teases from all the different Sony divisions on Twitter and all that nonsense was. It wild you know and you and you had to the thing with it was that you you, you had to kind of discern yourself what was real what wasn't yeah. what was you know sent by a pr firm what was using a copyrighted image image from google images put onto a you know official twitter account um you know looking at you like uh playstation um you know middle east or whatever you know they were always like posting like photos from like you know titan's era stuff <laughs> yeah. you know like which which you know people at the time you know didn't really like those games i think that's people sort of come around on them in the last few years but you know typically crash fans um you know have that reputation of being a little bit uh you know p particular with their taste so i always remember seeing stuff there and be like nah that's not real there's like no <laughs> juice to it but then all of a sudden one day there it was you know and it, and it just switched didn't it it just yeah. kind of happened yeah, like, everything leading up to that reveal, it, it was, like, it was cathartic. It was definitely cathartic. It was, like, oh, my yeah. God. Like, the initial thought was, like, well, what do we do now since there's no more speculation and this is here? But it's, like, there's a lot more we can do in terms of, like, stuff to talk about, stuff to discuss, because this is, like, basically, like, a rebirth phase almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And, and I think, yeah, you know, the big one was... Uh, of course, the Skylanders, uh, you know, Imaginators yeah. uh, reveal or whatever, you know, when Sean Layden came out and he did the whole thing and they had the graphics and they had all the assets in the background. And I remember I was actually over in Finland at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I did, I remember doing like a video like out in the middle of a forest in, in Vanta. Uh, and yeah, I remember like talking about it. And it's funny, you can still, even in that video, sort of feel the skepticism. Like I was still kind of a skeptic. I, I was like, oh, it's cool that it's on like Skylanders, but does that just mean they're just going to have him as a Skylander? Oh, we probably won't get a game, you know? Like mm -hmm. I remember sort of having that doubt in my mind, you know? And, and, and then it slowly sort of crept through like, wait a minute. Okay. They, they wouldn't be going to all this effort for just DLC. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> H having, having him as part of that like pack and as part of the, the that franchise, I, I remember we were all speculating about like, okay, let's say that crash does come back. Then like, how would it, go down would it be some would it be a remaster of the original games would it be a reboot uh would it be um would it be skylanders a lot of people were thinking that i remember going to myself 
look at because uh, I don't know how your thoughts are with Sparto with Sparto as a character in Skylanders, but with with me, I'm like, I don't like the way he was really treated so much. So like with Crash no, same, in there, same. okay, well, it's yeah. like with Crash in there, it's like, are they gonna treat him any better? And thankfully, I was proven wrong uh, as we came to see. But like the initial thought back then was. I don't have a real good feeling about this. Like, if this is if this is totally. the route that they were gonna I, go down, that's right. And, and and because I mean, we had every reason to be skeptical as well. Is that obviously yeah. now we're living in this world where you know we're we're eating. You know, we're having we're having a great time. You know, we've got all this 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 stuff out. You know, whether it's Crash Four, you know, the remakes, Nitro Fueled, potential party game stuff, 25th year anniversary, all that, mods, hacks, whatever. Yeah. But you got to remember, at the time, at the time, we were only about five years um, past the death of Neversoft, which was an Activision, um, you know, a studio that yeah. Activision owned. You know, they had, Tony Hawk had died, that's a series. Tony Hawk was dead at that point. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and Guitar Hero was dead. So they had milked these two franchises to death, basically. And so we thought, well, you know, they've kind of wrecked Spyro by making him a Skylander, like not having his own identity. He's just sort of part of the Skylanders. Of co- oh, well, of course, they're just going to add Crash in. It's just going to be like this BS, you know, Crash, like playable character thing, but we're not going to get, you know, anything more. So like, as I, as I said, it, I think everyone had the right to be a little bit concerned you know or, yeah. or rather looking at the skylander stuff and going yeah whatever like so what you know? yeah um as everyone knows because i've brought this up with a couple other guests here and there on different episodes of the show like my track record with skylanders was never the greatest i remember i can recall i'm not, not going to tell a story but i i can recall um looking at spyro's adventure in i think it was like a nintendo power magazine or something and i was like oh oh spyro and then i looked at that and i'm like the first thing I saw, like, uh, visually for the game was his new design, and I was like, I don't... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and, like, from totally. there, <laughs> get, playing the yeah. game, <laughs> playing the game, I was like, this is not fun. And, you know, I, I just dropped it after that. I was at the first game, then even, you know, it was, I was not a fan. But then come, you know, the sixth game, and, and then with Crash in there... My initial thought was, I don't like this as an option for Crash. And yeah. one of my initial things, which is still on my channel, I, there's still a video up there, I forgot what it's called or whatever, but I was like, okay, I'll cave if this looks good. All I'll do is just buy that pack, but then I'm going to sell the game afterwards. And yeah. I, don't, I don't care about the rest of the game, I just want to play the Crash stuff. But then, like, I think immediately once I um, was looking more into the game, because my curiosity took over, I was like, well... I've only ever played Spyro's Adventure. What did they do different? What did they improve on? The little, the little things I didn't like about uh, Spyro's Adventure, did they improve anything at all from all the rest of the series up to Imaginators? So I did play the rest of the game. And it was okay. Uh, <laughs> it was yeah. way better than Spyro's Adventure. Yeah, in I only... See, I, I watch people play Spyro's Adventure because we're kind of hyped about it within like my kind of Spyro Crash community sort of thing, you know, with that, sort of to do with their speedrunning stuff. And mm-hmm. so, you know, those guys, like, we'll play it. Well, what I was watching my friend Fraser play it and a couple other Australians and obviously Teal Game Master, like Teal, who had been in our Spyro speedrunning community, you know, years prior, basically blew up from Skylanders. Like, that's what really took his channel <laughs> to the Dang. next level. And um, I remember watching the footage of that and I remember thinking, oh, he can't jump. Okay, well then, what the <laughs> heck is going on? Like, okay, so a dragon can't jump or glide therefore this is not spyro as simple as that then i then i got um swap force and i played through that and i overall i enjoyed it like as a, just a general experience but again i always said and i said this in the lp too this is not a spyro game it's an okay game but it's not a spyro game exactly. why does he have to be involved in this ip like they actually don't even need him to be part of the ip and i mean you know, you see that in all the subsequent games because it's not, he's not really a main, he's not really that important overall, yeah. you know, like, and that's, and that's fine. Like, but like, that's why you don't need him, you know, that's, and that's obviously, that's what led to, of course, um, you know, reignited trilogy, which is, you know, a whole other topic. But the, the point is, is that Spyro wasn't needed. Therefore, 
but Crash, I think they, they did use him because I think they wanted to sort of, obviously it was already in development, but I think they wanted to test the waters. How much do people really want to see Crash in any capacity? You know, exactly. even a Skylanders game. And I think that the overall response being quite large, whether and it was in a po- some positive, some negative, is proof that, okay, wow, there's money in this franchise. Like, there is money. People want to see Crash in anything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, freaking, like, that's why I was so taken aback when I saw the B-roll footage of Thumping Wumpa Islands and just watching Crash in the other uh, areas of the main game. Just seeing him in action... Especially from that trailer. The trailer started... I started warming up to it just because I liked seeing all the references, the nods, the yo-yo as an attack, the TNT yeah. crates. So cool. And then I saw and really studied the B-roll footage for Thumper Wumpa Islands. And I went, oh my god. They're actually treating this with respect. They're doing the nods to the vets. They're making it look fun and silly for the new kids. Like, it's hitting everyone. And it, like... It, it, see... Yeah, but real quick, that is what sort of... That actually annoyed me a bit because I'm like, why couldn't they have done this with Spyro? Exactly! Why do they have to, you know, like, Fucking why can't they yes. do the respect? Yeah, you know? <laughs> That's, yeah. I feel like they just shoehorned him in, which is ironic because they really didn't. It started as Spyro's Kingdom and then became Skylanders. Yeah. So for that, at least for that first game, he was somewhat at the forefront, but then again, like, not really and that's where it got really confusing with me and with many others who are spyro fans who were like who is this game and this franchise first and foremost for i mean it's for kids yeah. obviously but why yeah how you said it why have spyro here if you know that it's going to make us vets get into it because we haven't had anything at that time since legend ended three years prior so we're going to be thirsting over something new for spyro oh he's in this thing cool he's barely really kind of like in it for the story and in terms of gameplay you can play as like 20 other characters besides him uh, okay right. oh he can't yeah you said jump or glide well there goes half of his like iconic move set all oh, right oh he looks like that oh <laughs> you know like <laughs> all these things were against it in my, at least in, in a lot of our opinions and it's like uh it's kind of what turned us off initially to it but then seeing that they kind of even by game six, you know, Spyro himself, he still, they improved, I guess you could say, the design a bit. I mean, it still doesn't look like yeah. Spyro, but like, it's a bit better. Um, and and I heard I heard that they did a decent job with the, the Skylanders TV show. And, and oh, that yeah. had Crash and Coco in it too. I haven't actually watched it, but I heard that people said that like, if you're like a lore fan, if you're like actually like, want like a good quality animation, that apparently that is actually a good show. So that's cool. That's you know, it's it's funny. It's sad though, isn't it? That that it kind of peaked at the end. Mm. Like it kind of got decent, and by then it was too late. You know, like that's yeah. that's a bit sad about Skylanders. Like right, you could you could say. Yeah, like it was the show was pretty solid. Academy. Um, I watched the whole thing, and that's weird, it. right? Like, huh? Uh, yeah. So you watched it. So you so you enjoyed it. Yeah, like basically what I wanted in like. Including all these characters and not because see I, I say oh you can play as all these characters in the games but like the stories for each game because I watched like all the cutscenes when I was preparing to make my uh, comeback saga video uh, all all around Spyro and talking about his role in Skylanders just so I could double check my sources do my homework do the history look at the nice. research yeah like I had to go through like I sat there one night and just binged those like. Mo- Skylanders movie all cutscenes yeah. types of videos reminds you of, like... remind of the old J- uh, Jack and Daxter movie thing they did. yeah that? <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um of all six of the games of the mainline console games anyway just to make sure I wasn't missing anything or that there weren't any mentions by name of him as the leader as the main one and like they're not there so like they just focus on, like, Flynn the balloonist or fucking Chaos being an idiot. And it's like, all right, well, that could only be funny for so long. And even as it is, yeah, they're not yeah. very funny. But then come Academy, completely different writers, completely different animation studio. And, like, they pretty much nailed it. They did a really good job at, like, having the quieter moments, the silly dumb jokes, the the good yeah. story, the lore. A lot of those characters I didn't find funny in the games were funny in the show. Crash and Coco had some awesome roles. Um, 
I heard it was something about Activision being kind of stingy near the end, unfortunately, that kind of brought them to cancel the show by season three. Yeah, and something to do with budgets, I think. And then, of course, yeah. I mean, that kind of tied into the, um, you know, with Crash, it kind of tied into the cancellation of that cartoon. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. You know, maybe there's a pattern there, but I mean, oh, we can't say for sure. We don't know. But, like, it is disappointing that, uh, I guess, now two animated properties, um, you know, one didn't happen at all, and then one kind of got cancelled as people were starting to really enjoy the storylines and stuff um but yeah i never i never watched it but yeah i think it's still on netflix i i probably should check it out at least like at least some of it you know give it a chance yeah I, you know I, I know that it is obviously it is probably aimed at the younger audiences overall but it's got stuff that us you know adults can appreciate yeah um the only thing because a lot of criticism has been around for the first season in particular namely like the first half of the first season yeah if you didn't like the way spyro's characterization was in the games they do some weird shit with him in the first half of season one like they they make him out to be like this narcissistic asshole and it's not fun to watch like he's he's one of those heroes that's like i'll do it later yeah whatever and he's voiced by justin long so you know if you've seen any of if you know his voice and seen him in different uh, ways yes drag me to hell Mm -hmm, then you'll know yeah so you put that voice to that characterization of Spyro and you get that assholeish kind of portrayal and it's like at least he gets better but as a character but like ugh, it's hard to watch hey you know what think about how they started out Ratchet you know mm -hmm. Ratchet yeah. in the first game is kind of a douche you know yeah. um, I mean and, and that got a lot of criticism at the time actually like people were like oh like this ratchet guy is so unlikable like he hates clank it's like yeah i mean he got left for dead you know like come on get <laughs> over it you know like i personally i'm a ratchet one defender i'll have you know um mm -hmm. <laughs> but but yeah you know it, it is always a bold move to have a a lead character kind of be like narcissistic and, and arrogant um it you need to have that character development otherwise people will turn on them immediately and it sounds like yeah. he did so that's cool at least at least that happened um yeah, and um, I mean it's yeah. Then, then then from Skyland as we, you know, we we jumped to the Insane Trilogy reveal, and that was like late 2016, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Jeez, I f I feel old now. I'm 25. <laughs> I, I think I was like I was like 20, 21 at the time. One Jeez. or so. Yeah, well, oh my yeah, god! Well, I, I was 20. I was 20. Shit, I was 20. <laughs> I didn't really be 20 really... again. Right? <laughs> I didn't realize we were around the same age. I thought, because a lot of people are like one to two, maybe three years older than me. So I thought you were probably like 26, 27. <laughs> yeah, I think our, our Canadian guy, I think he's like, I think he's a 26. year older than me, I think. A year or two? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and like Fringe, Jordan. Um, about the same, Fringe I think. Is, uh, yeah, I think about the same, yeah. Um, and then like Teal, again, I think, again, maybe slightly older. Yeah, I, I was one of the younger guys in our like Spyro Crash community, whatever you want to call it. Uh -huh. we, we actually called, that community was called the Crass community. That's sort of what, what I would consider the, those guys um, that like the, <laughs> that you guys may have seen in my videos, like in LPs and stuff. Yeah, we were called the Crass community. Kind of like a reference to Crash, but also like Crass as in we were kind of crude and stupid and, you know, <laughs> dumb and, you know. That kind of thing, um, but yeah. So yeah, that was I was yeah twenty at the time, and yeah, I mean I I was so excited from from day one. Like I, yeah, it was just awesome when when the Insane Trilogy was announced. Yeah, that that initial feeling you get when like everything you thought was gonna happen and wished was real immediately becomes real, and you go, oh shit! Like <laughs> yeah. it's actually oh, shit, here. Dude. You, you know. <laughs> I was talking to someone recently. Um, oh, I, I can't remember who it was. It, I was going to say my barber. Uh, you know, but I, don't, I don't have a barber. I have a hairdresser. We don't call that. Um, <laughs> but I was going to say my hair. I'm not. It wasn't. It was someone like outside, like in the real world. And but like long story short, like he said something like, you know, it's funny when I saw you, you know, years ago. Like I hadn't seen the person in years. It's funny when I saw you years ago your channel was based on the desire to have these games back. And then now it actually happened. How does that feel? And I remember thinking, yeah, I'm very vindicated. Yeah. Very satisfied that I started a channel 
a, a lot of it was based on hey let's what's why aren't these games more popular now why aren't they doing more and then of course they did so there is something sort of personally validating about that i think yeah definitely and just to know that like in your own way you help contribute to it by getting it out there by putting your thoughts out there and and yeah, giving yeah, it love. Absolutely. like we were all doing that and my only regret is that i feel i started too late because like i said uh, my channel started I, I opened Destination Mark in like 2012, right before I graduated yeah. high school. But like, I didn't start doing, I didn't have the format that I have now as early of the stages as it was back then around until around 2015. So late yeah. 2015, mind you. So like, it was only about another half a year after, or so a little over half a year after I initially got that format down and started talking about the speculations and the rumors and stuff that then everything started happening with E3 and, and all that. So I feel like I, I, I both hit it at just the right moment, but in my mind, the other half of it is like, I was still a little late to the ball on that. I could have um, started a little bit earlier I got, because there was initial like um, hesitation because a lot of my um, school life was trying to, you know, make friends based off of the games I like to play and the stuff I like to yeah. do. And you know how that goes. Like, uh, oh, you like that orange rat? Why? He's... Yeah, uh, yeah, I can, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was considered so, like, you know, in, in 2009, to, yeah, 2007 to 2010 sort of thing, it was considered, like, so lame to like platformers. Like, basically, everyone, it was, like, a forced edgelord and had to uh, like FPS. And so yeah. I always, like... That, that. It's funny that, that that whole thing, and from school, you know, having similar mentality, people sort of being like, oh, who cares about, like, those sort of games? It made me resent FPS for many years. Like, my, my YouTube description, I think it's somewhat different now, but it literally, I said in my description, like, years ago, I hate FPS and all that crap. You know, like, I remember I said that when I was, like, 14, you know, like, when I first set up the channel. Mm -hmm. um, because it was so... That was the cool thing to like, and everything was, like, edgy, and, and, those, and yeah, like, games like Spyro and Crash were considered lame, even though, like, you know, I don't know, people... I don't know. It, I mean, Pokemon was considered um, bad for, in my school, like, in, in years... When I was in year six, like, you know. So, it, it's funny how that just aged, like, absolute milk in terms of like you know popularity and like nerd culture in general like definitely i think we're validated as well in our like interests uh um not that it matters if an interest is niche but it's proof that like you know we like things but whether or not they're considered cool you know mm -hmm. which is important not just be not just to be a trend jumper you know we, we we're passionate about it because we like it exactly you know, we're not faking it we're not putting it on for views or, or anything like that definitely oh definitely i've always tried to make it known that like i'm super real with the stuff that i do on my channel like it's never because it's trendy if it's anything modern that's happening right now it's because i saw it and went oh shit that looks interesting <laughs> so like i want to give it a yeah. go but it's never anything like that a lot of other people are doing and stuff like that i don't tend to jump on on trends too much and i stay quite yeah consistently in my circle and then sometimes I'll, I'll branch out because it's it's important to branch out but like that space back then back then that was like ps3 era and 360 era fuck it was like call of duty battlefield that shit was everywhere my friends in my circle at high school would always um talk about it and yeah not that it pissed me off that that was what was going on around that time and that it was less about platformers it was just the fact that I couldn't get a hang of those games back then, and mm -hmm. I still really can't now. It's just not my thing. But the fact yeah. that this thing that wasn't my thing that's circling around freaking everywhere was, like, starting to bum me out a bit. And it never got to, like, a really bad, like, emotional or psychological degree. It was just more like, damn, I wish I could try to get into this, but I just don't care for this type of stuff. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I look at my PS3 collection and I realize, like, I clearly liked 
that generation more than I thought I did, but I didn't. Yeah, it wasn't the same as like PS2, for example. Like exactly. definitely, I will I will say that. You know, the stuff, the the adult content that I liked or teen content I liked, uh, it would be something like Infamous. Um, mm-hmm. You remember the Infamous series, yeah. Infamous One and Two uh, by Sucker Punch, uh, who of course you know moved on to uh, Ghost of Tsushima and they did Sly and, and all that. And so um, I like that. Um, I lo- I loved uh, I loved um, the Gran Turismo series. So I had five and six, uh, and then Sweet. yeah, just a lit- litany of other random games. Ratchet and Clank, of course, goes without saying. Um, yeah. yeah, but other than that, like yeah, if you compare my collection to the PS2, well, you know, not even comparable in terms of just the, the sheer passion I had for that console, the <laughs> PS2. And, like, when it came to Crash, uh, specifically in that era, I was still playing the games and having fun with them, but then there was just this little, like, thought. There, these, these thoughts were creeping into my mind where it's like, so is this considered kid stuff? Am I getting a little, mm. like, too old for this? And that's never a yeah. thought that ever crossed my mind before. And because of those more grittier games, you know, taking over the scene, it's like... And then me wanting to fit in with that crowd, it's like, okay, well... I, I guess I'll give it a shot. And there was this specific time about a year maybe or so where like I actively tried to like play crash less and I actually bought like modern warfare two or some shit and tried playing that. I was like, yeah. the, that was like the one that everyone was talking about around that time. And yeah, it wasn't fun. I was just like, Oh my God. How, why, why do people like mm-hmm. this? How is this talked about? Yeah. Like yeah. all the time. <laughs> it's because I think we, had all these different eras of gaming you know in in the in the 90s it was all platformers and adventure and stuff like that and then you know we kind of you know i mean yeah, yeah it was fps of course but you know doom and stuff um but then you know it, it it then it moved to like you know sort of open world stuff and and you know hybrid of platforming shooting adventure yeah. rpg and so then i think it just is natural that it kind of the market moved that way and, and gamers got old older and so they wanted things that are more mature um but i always said that like just because it's mature in content doesn't mean that you have to instantly play it because you know you're a teen or an adult like it doesn't matter really like a game doesn't have to be violent to be good doesn't have to swear to be good or whatever um you know there's a time and place for it for everything it's okay to like fps i think it's totally like i i i get why people do but I wish that it didn't become as oversaturated because it kind of created a bit of a drought yeah. uh, in platforming and adventure games, I felt. I, I guess everyone just thought, oh, that's Nintendo's thing now. You can get your Marios and your stuff there, but like... Oh, I, d- I despise that aspect. I kind of still hate that now, to be honest. I don't, I don't like that reputation. I think it still exists a little bit now where it's like, oh yeah, Nintendo, they own the the like platformer you know adventure kind of sphere of 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 content gaming whatever like i always thought that was a little bit odd to me um because to me the thing is that i'm a bit biased though because i never grew up with a nintendo system the only Mm. nintendos i had were uh nintendo devices i had were handheld i never had a until i got a nintendo wii i I will say Uh yeah yeah no i i never I, I grew up with Nintendo stuff way later into my childhood. It was around the time I was, like, entering middle school. Because, um, or, yeah. like, late elementary, like, early middle school. Because while PlayStation's been with me since, like, I can go back into my memory. Like, I'm two or three years old, literally. Uh, yeah. as I always say, um, as far as, as far back as I can remember, holding a controller, it was always Crash, Spyro, Tekken, Pac-Man World, Space Invaders, Qbert, Frogger, um, of course, all that stuff on PS One, man, it's epic. But um, <laughs> in terms of Nintendo, like I got into it by the GameCube era, and um, I was introduced to Smash Brothers Melee, and then from there. Mario was the one that stuck out to me as the platformer. So I played Sunshine and stuff like that. Um, oh, Sunshine's good, yeah. I love Sunshine. But, uh, <laughs> like, the one thing, too, as much as I love Mario, that I, I hate that people do, and it doesn't have to be with Crash, it could be, like, freaking anything. It's Astrobot, Sackboy, 
Um, a lot of the smaller ones, like uh, Lucky's Tale, people in reviews and stuff will be like, oh, this is a good game, but it's no Mario. And it's like, okay, can we like stop that? Because Mario does his own thing all the time. That's fine. Can we stop comparing every platformer character ever to Mario? Because yeah, it's getting yeah, a little... I, I totally get... Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's that's definitely something that I I completely agree with. Like the whole comparing everything positively or negatively to Mario or a Nintendo property as something that's always annoyed me. And, you know, considering I'm very argumentative on, on, um, on Twitter, as you will see, especially if you see any, me talk about wrestling, um, <laughs> you'll see, and me like go off at WWE trolls and stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I will argue that all the time when I see people talk about like how just by default Nintendo is considered the best. You know, like someone will say like Mario 64, the godfather of platform. I'm like, no, it wasn't. Here's why it wasn't. And I can pretty pretty well articulate why I don't consider it to be as good as like Aspyro, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I, and I'm, you, know, you know, this is, we won't debate it here um, if you disagree, but I, I think that like there's totally, I, I do not hate Mario 64, don't get me wrong. But I just, I, what I do hate is the default opinion that that is instantly considered the best because it was one of the first to do mm -hmm. it. Uh, no, I'm I, right there I'd with say, you. Yeah. yeah, because if you want to say that, then Jumping Flash and like Bubsy would be considered, you know, that they were like really <laughs> early too. You know, I mean, Jumping Flash is good, but like, yeah, Bubsy's like super early as well. So, yeah. you know, you, just because something was there first doesn't necessarily mean it did it best. Exactly. Because the, the argument I always saw was, which one's better of its era of that year, Mario 64 or Crash 1? And I'm like, well, okay, when people, because even spinning that back off into like Crash's stuff, people always say, oh, well, with Crash 1, the, the controls are too slippery and wonky and uh, it's too hard of a game and... Uh, you can't even save the game properly. You could use passwords if you want, but you gotta, like, yeah, yeah. do the levels perfectly, and yada yada. And it's like, oh, but Mario 64, you can go everywhere. It's open world. You have all these levels to go into, and they're so expensive. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah but Crash looks prettier for the time. It runs better. Um, <laughs> there, there are different things that you can compare the two if you had to, uh, like everyone else does. But, like... At a certain point, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at just, I mean, I mean, I remember what was it? Um, there's like that famous, uh, there's like a famous comment that was made by I think Mi Miyamoto in Japan uh, at E3, where he was like playing Crash One, and he said something like like something about how like the environment was like really good. He said, I remember he had this really quite a large compliment for the game i remember that uh -huh. like i remember him, him saying something like wow like they've done a really good job with something i can't remember specifically but i remember them being impressed you know and impressed with the system yeah. so yeah that's cool yeah that's yeah it's really cool i, I love seeing miyamoto scope out the competition because yeah, i great. actually i actually saw him do it live and it was am in person it was amazing uh, i'm gonna tell this little quick story it has nothing to do with crash or anything but um and i'm not trying to like flex this story i just think it's a really funny no, story no, no. <laughs> for, for everyone listening i'm not trying to flex the story it's just really funny um uh, e3 2018 i went with my friend weston uh we went there and we're looking around, and then I was, um, we went our separate ways, he was going to one booth, and I was over by, um, I think Nintendo or something, I don't remember, and, um, I was trying to find some other guys uh, from YouTube that I saw, that, I, that I've known for a while, not, like, personally, but that I wanted to meet in person, and that I saw were there, and they were tweeting, oh, we're walking around, so I was trying to find them, and then I almost, um... Bumped. I was looking at my phone and I'm walking and yeah. I almost bumped into like this little Japanese dude in a, in a suit and I'm like, oh, oh my god. And um, I realized that <laughs> he was there and then there were other dudes around him, or well, not around him, but yeah. like also alongside him forming this circle as they're walking and they're also in suits. And I'm like, the hell? And I saw that they were guarding a dude in the middle and that was Miyamoto. And I went, oh sh shit. Yeah. <laughs> It was really cool, but unfortunately, yeah. uh, they didn't want pictures. <laughs> Wait, so what? When was that? When was that? Uh, E3 2018. 2018. Okay, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you went to E3 as well. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'd love to go to one of those one day. Um, it's really uh, cool. You know. 
not for a while. I don't think. Well, you know, we'll see. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I, I, I don't think. I don't think this year uh, there's E3 isn't there. I think it's like well, it's like digital, right? It's going to be like a digital thing online. Yeah. yeah okay. I reckon 2022, you you could see it back. Um, Hopefully, yeah. You know, because I think people will be starving for that kind of like convention experience again as well. Yeah, I hope so. Because like I, I keep hearing in the space that like. Um, going all digital is more convenient for everyone who wants to watch at the same time and for them having, they can make their presentations ahead of time and mm-hmm. it, it saves on money for all the big uh, set pieces and stuff they build when you're walking around looking at the stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, but I hope that yeah, there are benefits. Sure. There are benefits, mm-hmm. but, but I don't think, I think the benefits are more to do with, um, that kind of money saving it's like yeah it's good because that's what you have to do but then but then missing out on the live experience is is really great mm-hmm. yeah uh, yeah sorry is is it's saying no not really great but like it's it wouldn't be great to miss out on the live experience so it'd be really great to have that all back and i think people know that yeah it's going to cost more money but they're going to have a more immersive experience so to exactly speak. Because not only did I go 2018, but I went three years in a row. It was 17, 18, and 19. And those, not having been to a, a convention that huge before, it was like real. I, I was like really blown away with just how the scope was, how the scene was. Yeah. Uh, only getting to see like clips of people from past years and watching other presentations of E3 from past years. But then be- being there is like a whole other thing. And it's really cool. Um that Miyamoto thing, though, I just wanted to talk about. Because cause he was walking yeah. around. He wanted to see the different stuff. And just watching him silently just walk around and look at stuff, you can tell he's just taking everything in. And it's really cool to see when a, a big-time guy like him like really just gets to do that. Because you, you see like the wheels turning of like what Definitely. they're doing yeah. and stuff like that. It's just it's really cool. Because he was looking at like the Fallout 74 booth or something. So it was really cool. Oh, yeah. For, okay, yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, he um I mean they 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 still do content that's like for older people and stuff, but a lot of the a lot older people for like but like or aimed at older people, but um they didn't um they a lot of the time you know Nintendo just end up just porting popular games from other consoles, you know, like they mm-hmm. they sort of just pick up some port of the game you know like with the switch or something like that it's like i remember this game you know you can now have it on the switch two years later um (laughs) you know like kind of like with it and they did it with spyro as well when they moved spyro onto uh you know reignited onto uh the onto the switch did did entertain trilogy made onto the switch right yes yeah yeah yeah. i I always forget about that for some reason (laughs) because it was so long ago yeah i don't actually have a switch so um and then of course yeah nitro fueled i think nitro fueled launched on the switch so i I remember that did, yeah. you know yeah and then we didn't we didn't, we never got pc which you know considering i i've spent all this money to upgrade my pc to be like a you know a, a, a good machine i would have loved to have um nitro field on pc and like 1440p and 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 60 fps like that would just be yeah the dream because that game is like it's fantastic but man 30 if you pause if you're doing a video and you pause the frames it's impossible to get a screenshot because it's so blurry yeah like it's <laughs> legitimately so blurry like i feel like racing games as a general rule should be like 60 at least in my opinion yeah because marker we and eight um were pretty consistently i think at around 60 um yeah it, and, and those games look so good when you play them back and you look at them so I would definitely like to see a CTR also, yeah, uh, go that route. Yeah. So what do you think is uh, what do you think is next? Like what are, what are we what are you thinking is is sort of coming up? Oh boy, for Crash. Um, <laughs> yeah, and Crash. Yeah. Like, man, uh, the Wumpa League stuff is really interesting. They're playing really coy with it. They. They know that we know that they're on to something and they're doing something, but of course they're not going to yeah. say anything while sort of saying something. So they're doing their usual shtick. Um, looking at uh, 
that one little mystery character from Coco's portrait in the 100% ending of Crash 4 and not knowing who that is, but apparently they're going to play some sort of role in Crash 4 at some point or in something having to do with Crash uh, because yeah. uh, one of the artists was uh, was teasing it with a lot of people. And uh, the TV image that was found when you beat 106% and then you go back and smack the TV and then a new image pops up. Uh, like all that oh, stuff. Yeah, that's like the Wumpa League logo, right? That was what was sort of theorized. Yeah. Right, potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I mean, um, is yeah, like those with those characters, uh, you know, the new one and, and, and the also the omission of other characters as well, like the creators, rather the the what you didn't see or what you could, you know, like for example, like a little cameos and stuff like that, you know, whether it be Koala Kong icon, you know, Pinkstripe icon, uh-huh. uh, Ripper Roo in the background, that kind of stuff very much um, is the kind of perfect teaser for then being like a character in like a, you know, like a player versus player game. You know, like it's like the perfect way to go, well, you didn't get him in the main game, but you are going to get him, you know, you know, in this party thing or in this extra curricular thing or or i mean or dlc i mean i always thought it would be a good idea to do dlc considering um there's like a lot of um you know there's so many characters yeah there's so many areas that you could expand to and there's and there was also that cut content there's like element like the elemental masks or something like that and there was like um wasn't there some textures or like models that were removed that were like hidden in the files somewhere like to do with like yeah like a death clock or something like that do you remember that uh, I th- there's like a think... like some kind of like hidden assets or something like that to do with crash 4 i heard something about that the only thing i remember from the elementals which was in game were, were their little their little cameo hidden appearances in um i think it was blast of the past but besides that like ah uh, it, it sounds like vaguely familiar but i don't think i read too much up on that yeah there was this there was this thing um yeah, there was like, there were like, all these different. Um, like I'm just briefly, briefly looked it up. So there was different models of like, um, there was different models of time relics. There was um, some. Yeah, it's like it looks like there was like a, like a ranking system for the uh, insanely perfect relics as well. Oh, yeah, like yeah. and like those animations and stuff like that. And then there was, um, where is it? Where is it? Ah, oh, it's somewhere else this just got to try and looking yeah yeah there's like you know yeah the elemental stuff um yeah it's just it's just it's very there's there's definitely like crash 4 put it this way yeah as i've said i don't think it's the end of crash 4 you know like i think crash 4 has got a lot of juice left in it or the crash 4 era of, of crash content and then of yeah. course that goes without saying that all the mod stuff right now has been crazy so far. Like I've, I've barely got into it yet, but I'm going to be jumping into it very soon. Um, nice. There's like gloomy glacier mod. Have you, have you seen that? It's like a, it's like crash. It's like Spyro heroes tail level in, um, in crash four. I saw some previews. I haven't watched the video of it yet. So I'm definitely going to check that out. Mind blowing. Mind blowing. <laughs> like they're just, they're doing, they're doing so well. Like it's just going to be amazing. Um, plus as well that goes about one other thing um, there's like 15 skins that haven't that were like in the unused like unused skin names for example things like Crash Zombie Torna Satia um, Crash Pirate Neo Alien Dingo Shark you know skins for like Dingo Doll Cortex and stuff like that yeah Torna so yeah very exciting yeah um there's definitely, I think, going to be more to Crash Four. I thought it was going. I thought there was going to be DLC like right out the gate, like sometime later after the initial launch. Um, when they talked about the PS Five and like next gen um release and stuff, I yeah thought that that's where we were going to hear more. I mean, they they teased again some of that stuff, the Wumpa League stuff, but um mainly the TV image stuff, but yeah, uh, I thought we were going to get like some real like official confirmation of what was going down with that by the time they were, um, cause I think Lou Stutter talked about it a bit in one of the state of plays. It was right before the game launched on those other platforms. Um, but no, there was no real mention. And then when it came to talking about DLC, like, are we going to see anything extra anytime 
uh, immediately, like real soon, he was like, we're just focusing on bringing the game to these next gen consoles. We're not really yeah. thinking about extra content right now. And I'm like, well, shit, if it's not DLC, then what is this stuff that they are in fact teasing? Yeah. That's right, because they did the whole ad thing, and, you know, that was in the background. Yeah, it's like, yeah, they know what they're doing. Like, that, we're in this era of that's how you announce things. You announce things by teasing things, basically. Exactly. <laughs> it's, we, we've learned that many a time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we have, exactly. Yeah. So, now, the future is definitely bright, put it that way. Oh, for sure. Okay, well, I think it's time we should get into some questions. Uh, do you have time for that? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Sweet, okay. So, uh, starting off with the first question, uh, what's your history with Crash? When did you first get into the series, and what was the first Crash game you ever played? First Crash game I ever played was actually Crash 3, and so I got that uh, when I first got my PlayStation 1, I think it was like maybe my third game after Gran Turismo and Spyro 2. So yeah, I got into Crash from 3, um, and I never actually owned 2 and 1 for years. I used to just rent them um, oh. and stuff like that. So I used to rent Crash 2, used to, and then I found Crash 1 at like a garage sale. Um, you know, So basically, I really got into Crash Yeah, about, at about 5 years old. Um, five, yeah, 5 years old, and then pretty much stayed... Yeah, pretty much just played 3, and then rented 2 and 1, and then I... To be honest, I probably played just as much of like Wrath of Cortex and Twin Sanity and and stuff like that. Um, I was you know a huge fan of that that era because I was young and I didn't really know any better as well. Like I couldn't really tell the difference per se between oh. like the, the PS2 and the PS1 in terms of like the glaring problems. Like I knew there was something that was like not the same with Wrath of Cortex, but I still loved it anyway. You know, oh, like yeah, I yeah. still you know I still appreciated it. It just was slightly off. Uh, you know, I mean, Wrath of Cortex for me is like nostalgic in the sense that it was my first ever PS2 game that I owned. Yeah, it was one of my first PS2 games too. In fact, yeah, I think it was like I think it was I think my first PS2 games were Jack Two, Spyro uh, Enter the Dragonfly, and Wrath of Cortex. So yeah, <laughs> nice. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, I think for me, well. Like I said, as far back as I can remember, it was always Crash and Spyro and all of them. Um, Crash, Crash 1, I mean, I basically started at the beginning. I mean, you and I were, like, just a year older than the series. So, like, of course, at that That's time, right. I was inefficient at anything. I was a baby. But, like, by the time I actually got to, like, understand what a video game was, it was Crash yeah. 1. And then, yeah. like, I can't remember when we got two and three and CTR, those just kind of appeared in the house, you know? So like, actually, that's a good thing too. Yeah. Actually I rented CTR as well. Love CTR when I rented it. And then I think I, yeah, I'm trying to remember when I bought it. Yeah. I think I bought it a couple of years later. And again, like a, you know, like a cheaper, you know, like a game store, like a used game. Yeah, uh -huh. actually. And actually, and sorry, actually take it back. Actually, now that I remember this, I can't remember. I can't believe I forgot this. I played Crash Bash all the time. I absolutely <laughs> thrashed that game. I played that constantly. That might actually be, you know, in the first few years, probably my most played game, actually. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I, I, I got to the end of the story mode a long time ago, but I don't know if I actually beat it. And if I did, I don't have that save file anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. 200% is a nightmare. Oh boy, um, but then like with Wrath of Cortex being my first PS2 game, and not quite knowing that by by Bash like it, it wasn't Night Dog doing the games anymore, but like I even like you, I, I still really liked <clears throat> Bash. I love Wrath of Cortex uh, to a degree. I'll still defend it as like it's not as bad or as shit as, as everyone says it is, but obviously yes, it does have it has its it has its problems. Um, yeah. Twin Sanity shit. I remember that. Um, Going through, uh, so we had Hollywood Video, and that was our rental store, our little video game, uh, end game rental store. And so um, they had the little catalogs that you could flip through to see what was current, what just came out, what's coming up next for the store, what they're yeah, going to have uh, yeah, yeah. there. And Twin Sanity was there um, on the game section. You, you flip the, you, you look at it 
like the front cover and then you flip it upside down on the other side and then you get the game section and in the game section one particular it was like oh three or something uh, they set up and coming was twin sandy and i was like what like you know so <clears throat> i basically have a story for like almost from like twin uh wrath of cortex onward i have like a mini story for like every crash game as it came out and how i found out about it so there was always i was always keeping up to date with crash you know yeah yeah this shit was unreal okay so uh which crash game is your favorite and what is your favorite aspect of that game i think when considering yeah when considering the best crash game for me i think this is like a common answer um but I think it's Crash 2 because everyone, you know, and most people <laughs> usually say this because it's the consistency and it's the variety without being too much variety. Um, you know, where 3, some would say it kind of, it went too far in that variety vehicle direction. Um, whereas Crash 2, you know, had some vehicles, had some stuff, but it was like overall a very, very, very well put together game with a great set of environments and levels. Um close second at this point i would say it's probably close seconds probably maybe third maybe crash four um because i mean i haven't actually played as much of crash four as i'd like to because i've been quite busy with work and stuff like that and and i've got some other games i've been going through um you know so it's like i haven't played as much of crash like i haven't 100 i haven't even 100 percent in crash four to be honest but I have uh, played it a lot and I do enjoy it. Um, but I need to play more of it. I need to, I need to 100% at the very least. I need to get all those perfect <laughs> relics. Um, good luck, I say, to yeah. myself. Because <laughs> it's so difficult. Like, holy crap. But, yeah. Very much um, very much a fan of 4. So, it probably goes... I, I reckon it probably goes 2, 4, 3, 1. In terms of, like, main mainline games um and that is not to say i dislike one it's just the, it's just the least out of the out of the uh-huh. four yeah well, that's pretty solid um <clears throat> yeah crash 2 no it had that um yeah like you said it had variety it had improvements without feeling like it was overcompensating it's like okay so we're gonna fix like all this stuff and make it you know it still had what made crash 1 so well received and so loved Definitely. for those who did love Definitely. it but um it was really solid yeah um I, th- I think after crash one crash two is the one i tend to visit the most of either the um og or remastered trilogy it's usually like crash one and yeah. then immediately crash two yeah yeah uh so on the flip side of that my next question is what is your least favorite crash game and what makes it your least favorite what aspect of that um I think for me it's probably it's probably got to be Crash uh, Crash maybe Crash of the Titans or Mind of a Mutant uh, Mind of a Mutant because I thought it was going to be a way longer game and when I beat it I was like that's it oh crap I thought it was like <laughs> really quick and then Crash of the Titans and I never actually beat it ever and um, I never beat it and I remember I, I got like stuck on i think level 17 and again i rented it um and you know i never beat it so i kind of was like and it was like so linear that i just i don't know like it was like weird because like it's not like i wanted open world but it just i don't know something about it just didn't click with me that the 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 mutants that said the last time i played that would have been i would have been like 13 14 so i don't know whether these days i would actually i think i wouldn't hate it as much as i did i think you know i think it was like (laughs) part of being a teenager you know what i mean yeah so so <clears throat> that kind of like dislike of it was did, did it stem from how everyone else's did where it's like this doesn't feel like crash it's not my crash bandicoot or is it more like it's just doing some kind of weird things i kind of just prefer like i, prefer I the... just thought it just didn't yeah it didn't really feel like crash the whole much the whole jacking the enemies thing it just it just felt more like a combat game um <laughs> You know, it, and, I mean, I like combat. That, that's the thing, actually, these days. Um, but you know, I just, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't feel the same, and it just, and it just, it just in terms of competently produced, they're just simply like they weren't as well put together as the Naughty Dog games as well. Um, you know, the Naughty Naughty Dog games were just, you know, impeccably coded, and yeah, it just didn't feel the same. But 
you know, I, I think that if I actually play them now, I wouldn't ha hate them as much. It's because it was the only option. You know, that was all we had. So now we've got the choice. We've got the new games. We've got the remakes. You can go back and play them. It's not. It's not going to hurt anyone. You know, same with Skylanders. Yeah. You know, but like, but when that's all you have, it kind of. It's kind of a shame. Yeah, like at the time, oh uh, seven, oh eight. It, we only really had PS one era, and then we had like two or three other console games and then these two that people just felt were, yeah. were so different and felt so foreign to what Crash was already established to be. Um, but I think what saved it for a lot of people who do really like it um, is the fact that it didn't lose its identity. It just tried to switch focus from the strict platforming to the combat. And... I hear a lot more often now than back then that, like, for a lot of people, combat feels slower when you're trying to platform because now you've got two yeah. different games going on in your game. You've got the navigation exploration part, which everyone found fun in uh, earlier Crash games, and then the more tedious, um, stress-inducing combat parts where it's either hard as yeah, shit right. or you're just mashing square to swat enemies with your big mutant hand you know yeah yeah totally. um and for me i just kind of i mean i don't know if it was because i was that impressionable or or what but like i found it really fun and so like to me you could still spin you know they call it the old school move um yeah. <laughs> you could still break crates they're not you know as plentiful and they don't count for anything but you know you still get goodies inside of them um I don't know. I didn't even really mind the. I, I didn't mind the um, redesigns for the characters. I think the only ones that I felt were really weird were Uka Ukas and mainly Tiny's because Tiny was just so vastly different from what we know him yeah. to be. So like, yeah, Tiny was bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> but that didn't stop me from uh, printing out the the uh character photos off of wikipedia and plastering them like posters like little mini posters on my wall ah, yeah. at the time classic classic yeah i was super into it so like all the screenshots of the gameplay and of the characters i would have those all on my wall around that time um oh man i, I was just hyped as i always was the hype never really died down um, even when Boom Bang eventually had come out before uh, Titans of Wonder from Mutant, I didn't have a DS at the time, and I really wanted one mainly for Crash Boom Bang because I didn't see or hear anything about it, so I didn't know its reputation yet. And when I yeah. uh, eventually did play it, I went, whoa, this is weird. It's <laughs> <laughs> like the one game I can say, yeah, don't, don't play Crash Boom Bang. <laughs> yeah, Boom Bang, I never even play, ever. Don't. <laughs> like, so, yeah. I know, we'll keep it that way. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no. Um, you know, it, to each their own, it's completely fine. I do understand why people uh, think that the Titans era was a bit bizarre. And that was one other thing, too. I forgot to mention that. When we were talking about uh, how we were speculating Crash was going to come back by the time of 2016, that was one of the options. Are they going to make a third Titans game, or are they going to do something, some kind of a game that carries off of where <clears throat> Mount Over Mutant yeah. left off, because Cortex escapes into space at the end of Mount Over Mutant. And so, yeah. Yeah. from there, I was thinking... I mean, one of the things I said in one of my videos a long time ago was like, oh, well, if they wanted to bring back, like, Crash Bandicoot Evolution, you know, what Twin Sanity was supposed to be, because it was space-themed, there you go. If you wanted to bring that back and make it, like, its own kind of thing, but with the Twin Sanity and Mount Over Mutant nods, it's gift-wrapped for you right there, because Cortex leaves into space at the end of Mind Over Mutant, and then you can have, like, the Twin Sanity-ish roots sprinkled in for, you know, fan service. Um, Definitely. Yeah. That was, like, my yeah, little there's idea. a lot of directions they could go in um, mm -hmm. post Mind Over Mutant, and then, obviously, they were, we're going to get that. We're going to get the crash-landed thing, and that all went to, you know, went to shit in the end. So it's like, yeah, they, they were clearly... They were thinking, but, you know, again, the budget and the money, and they just didn't... They didn't want to take that gamble... Yeah. after the games didn't do as well so yeah yeah it's a bit you know but i'm I, we all had to get to it to get to here so it's kind of like well at least we got it you know at least we at least we got at least we got to four and hopefully we'll you know and hopefully we're gonna get more 
Yeah, no, <clears throat> no, definitely. Like it was the early 2010s was like a bizarre era for gaming because not only was it still in the space yeah, of the just, shooters I, and stuff, yeah, I just liked it. Yeah, but like, like <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> a lot of a lot of franchises were in the middle of being rebooted, like um, Devil May yeah. Cry or Tomb Raider, and yeah. Crash was yeah. even going to go down that route. How we were saying when I was Crash landed, and. <clears throat> that's what made games like PS All Stars like just kind of fall flat in the end. Even though a lot of people still find it really fun, but like, yeah, why why yeah. wasn't so and so represented? How come this version of this character isn't here and not the version we all know? It's because of all that crap that was happening in the background, and, and with Crash, shit. Not only were games getting canceled, but cameo appearances because he was supposed to be in PlayStation All Stars, like, were getting shot down. And Activision had no clue what they were gonna do with the franchise because the last two games didn't sell too well, or at least even if they did, they weren't really good critically, you know, well, with critics and with fans. So, like, they had no clue where to go from here. And even though, again, a reboot yeah. would have been the safe, uh, the safest route, for whatever reason, you know, just not seeing it as viable at the time, they just were canning stuff left and right. But, yeah, to immediately just somehow have a, a switch flipped and see that, no, we still wanted Crash. And with us campaigning and doing, you know, um, petitions, bring back Bandicoot, stuff like that, like, we did it, <laughs> you know? It, it was yeah. an effort on both our parts, us yeah. demanding yeah. it and them supplying it. So, you know, it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. And so, speaking of which, my next question is, within that six to eight year gap of no Crash, uh, what were you doing in that time? Were you playing Crash games and wondering what they were going to do? Were you campaigning? Were you um, just getting into, like, what was your gaming space like? Like, getting into new franchises and stuff? Or, like, what were you doing around that time? Yeah, so, yeah, during that time, um, I would say, yeah, I mean, I was, like, I was, you know, I, yeah, I had a, you know, obviously I had a PS3, so I was playing PS3 games, um, you know, like I, I was playing PS3 games, so like I was, I was with that generation, but like, you know, playing the, you know, I had, I had a Nintendo Wii, um, I was, you know, a big Pokemon fan, you know, from like 2004 to 2011, I'd say, <laughs> so during that time, um, then in 2010, you know, 2009, 2010, I got into YouTube. So YouTube community and like Spyro speed running and stuff like that, that ended up occupying a lot of my time, um, tournaments, game tournaments, racing games and, you know, racing like, you know, Crash and Spyro games, like so playing the, you know, the original ones a lot. Um, nice. you know, so I was doing that. Like I was just, just very much still playing the old games, doing videos, um, and somewhat being attached to the, the modern scene, but not really in not really FPS games, but anything yeah. else, um, <laughs> you know, any other game. Um, um, I'm trying to think. And then, yeah, like it wasn't until, it, you know, it wasn't until yeah 2017 once um, Crash, uh, you know, you know, End Saint Trilogy was announced, and you know, 2016 when I went to Japan. Um, I came back from Japan and I got into the Yakuza series. So I know this is like, this is like post, you know, this is in, after the gap, but mm -hmm. that's been like the series I've really been into in the past few years. Like that's like one of my favorite series um, to play is Yakuza. And cool. uh, that's like a combat game, sort of like beat em up sort of thing, RPG. And now it's like turn-based RPG. It kind of jumped to a new genre. So that's been, that's a lot of fun. That's a great series. And there's so many games too. And they've just all came to PC too, so um, you know you can. It's very easy to access. But yeah, pretty much all of them are on PS4. Some are on PS3. All of them now on PC. So yeah, great series. Nice. Yeah, I'd seen like gameplay bits and and trailers for those like re, uh, re, remakes or remasters, whatever they are, and stuff like that. Them coming to to newer consoles and the PC and stuff. Um, I yeah. never. Yeah. I never tried them out, but I've I've definitely heard of them, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was just, <laughs> it was a lot of the same, like, staying in, the, in, in that space of, of Crash and Spyro, but trying to, like, figure out, like, what I wanted to do gaming-wise around that time because of how mm -hmm. 
the industry was shifting. So trying out Call of Duty, it not working out too much. Ironically enough, it was <clears throat> one random day of me playing Titans where I was like, because I just decided to play, I was bored, and I was like, okay. no, no, Cr- Crash is still really, really fun. I still, I cannot, no matter if, even if I actively try, I can't escape this series. It defines me in a way, like mm-hmm. with all yeah, those, totally. with all those stories that I, that I have. All the times I've seen a new game pop up in some way or another, whether it was online or through a commercial on TV or something, I would always get hyped. I was always there, and to just try to abandon it out of not out of nowhere, but like that easily wasn't going to happen. And yeah. That's when it clicked. I was like, I nah, fuck this. I'm just gonna I'm gonna stick with Crash, stick with Spyro, and, and all the other stuff that I love that are that just cartoony fun. That's where I'm best affiliated with. You know that that's yeah. where I feel like yeah, that's like it. my my niche or whatever. Um, well, speaking of Crash Four, uh, my final question is. How much did you? How much did you enjoy Crash Four? And what are your overall thoughts and opinions on the game? And if you have any uh, favorite or least favorite aspects about it? Yeah. So Crash Four, um, I think was really one of the best returns you could make after that many years of, of not getting a mainline Crash game. And, yeah. You know, it gave something for everyone. It rewarded the long term fans it uh is accessible enough to play but very difficult to master um i think it's t- i think it is too difficult overall to platinum i think it is i think they did go that just a bit too far i think to it, in terms of the reward you know like what what you get versus what you have to do like yeah. some of the you know no death sort of thing um but i understand why they did that because they wanted to be like we're hardcore i think a crash 5 will still be difficult but probably be toned down just a touch um i think exactly, yeah um but i still loved it like i still loved it and like it being too hard isn't really a bad thing it's just an opinion you know it's not like it's they should just make it easier but it's like it, it damn it's a hard game you know that's that's for, yeah um so yeah it's definitely no no insult now no insult to say that it's a you know it might be that touch bit too hard but it is fantastic. Because of all the times, because I, I was talking to me <clears throat> to me hard about this recently, actually, yeah. where it was like, I love how much Crash One representation has been coming out recently within um, what I like to call post hiatus. You know, after that big gap of of nothing, um, where. I'll, in Skyliners Academy, they do reference the Crash 1 theme song, and Crash 1's yeah. theme song is sampled a lot in Crash 4. In fact, um, they don't even sample Warp's theme, which is arguably like one of Crash's main theme songs that everyone knows. Um, it is, yeah. No, no often... one remembers the Crash 2 one. Yeah, no one really, no one really references that. <laughs> I still like it a lot. I mean, I love it. Yeah, me too. Because how it was basically like a huge sample from Crash Ones, and then it just kind of does its own thing too. So I like that a lot about it. Um, but I mean, something about Crash Threes was just, I guess, way super catchy, and then it was everywhere. Yeah. But Crash Four opted to sample Crash Ones uh, theme and stuff. And I think besides just music and whatnot. Um, they really wanted to capture that essence of Crash 1, which, you know, yes, it was a pretty difficult game for those who didn't quite realize, oh, wait, okay, this is like more of a patience type of game where you're trying to look at patterns and, you know, jump your way across these things in a timely manner, whereas 2 and 3 were like, okay, well, it's going to be less, you know, levels made up of nothing but bottomless pits with just platforms and more like and less um completely vertical segments and more just yeah. okay hop some stuff spin some dudes you'll make it to the end just fine but crash 4 went okay well we'll take bits of that and bits of crash 1's type of platforming and kind of mash those and also take the bits where, yeah, if you want this particular gem, you can't die more than three times. Uh, you want this relic, you can't die at all. So, like, yeah. I do appreciate it. 
But yes, it's unbalanced in the sense that everything counts to your percentage. None of it seems bonus. None of it seems like something you could do just to get that trophy or achievement or just because, you know, bragging rights or whatever. The only bragging yeah, rights so. thing... Like the only bragging rights thing in Crash 4 are the dev times, which are so ridiculous. Why would you try going for them? Yeah, um, yeah. Agreed. It's, oh my god, Platinum Relics. Just saying that Platinum Relics, uh, Platinum Time Trial Relics, are what's required this time around. Like, that should clue you in that, yeah, this game is not going to mess around. It's, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the thing. I, I don't think that a Platinum Relic should be required for, for 106, personally. Um, but I, I, I understand why they wanted to do that and really reward the fans that really put the effort in. Yeah. Uh, but like, that's the part that feels a little like, okay, that, that definitely needed to be tweaked because it feels unbalanced, but everything else about the game is so good. Just the, the voice yeah. acting, the animation, especially the animations. Um, yeah, yeah, great. The level design, the gameplay, the mechanics, it's all pretty solid not everything is absolutely perfect even with uh, all the updates and changes they tried to uh, uh make uh come that that patch when the uh next gen release came out but yeah it's solid really yeah at least they fixed the polar thing that was <laughs> you know people hated that and i get it i mean you have to start the whole level all over again you know like it's it's stressful yeah, funny, funny enough, before we started recording this, I was playing through the game uh, just earlier, and I got to Bears Repeating, and I actually perfect, I got the perfect relic first try, which was the first time wow. I had done that since I started playing back in October, so I was like, hey, this wouldn't be possible without that patch. <laughs> without... That's right, you did it, yeah. Well oh, done. boy. Because I remember when I streamed it blind, it took me like an hour <laughs> to get just the all crates, not even perfect relic. I died so many times having to restart the polar segment just to get the crates. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the worst part. That, but you know what? It's a, it's a, it's a, as you said, patience is a virtue with with these games. Like you've got to be patient, and yeah. if you're not going, for, you know, if you're going for the insanely perfect relic, you don't have to worry about doing it quick. You know, so it's like, it's like, take your time, get it done, you know, have Cause, fun. Exactly, because the levels are going to demand you go through them multiple times anyway, and you're going to be going through them multiple and, times and, as it is. And there's definitely some annoying crates, like, I, you know, that, that are like, that are like, oh, damn, like, that's tough. But it's a bit like when you're a child, and, you know, now I can instinctively know where every crate is in, like, two and three, for example. Like, I know that perfectly. Um uh -huh. You just know by playing over and over again. It's the same thing with, with Crash. All you have to do, if you're really stuck, just watch a walkthrough, you know, get used to it, play through it, and then eventually, like, when you come back to it, you know, years later, you're going to remember where everything is. It just naturally, that's just what happens as a, as a gamer. You just yeah. retain that knowledge. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's, you know, it don't that, the, the thing about the missing crates, I don't think that, I think that's just because it's a new game. Of course, you're going to be struggling to find it. I would hope it's hard to find these crates because it is meant to be, you know, uh, in an exploring game, even though it is a, a linear path. Yeah, the crates in particular, I feel, again, a lot of these aspects, anything you try to go for, whether it's getting the all crates gem, getting the hidden gem, going for the perfect drilla, do, getting the flashback tapes, completing the flashback tapes, a lot of them all come back to that central critical theme when you're looking at the game analytically of it's easy enough to see what you got to do, but then doing it is going to be the yeah. hard part. And there are still times where some of it feels maybe just the slightest bit unbalanced where in terms of crates, like some of them are just hidden in fucking weird places that they loved what crash two and three did like once or twice throughout either of those games where like yeah. one crate is like out of frame. Cause a bunch of crates can be found out of frame in certain levels in crash four. And, um, then you get like freaking um, a real grind where like by the bonus round platform there are like these tires and there are there's one crate in each 
in either of the tire little uh, piles right there. And if you didn't know that, you can actually ask yourself out of getting the all crates gem. Because if you get on the bonus platform without hitting that one crate off to the left hand side in that tire pile, by the time you come back, you finish the bonus round, you'll come back down and land on that side. And then I'm that pretty crate sure just... that happened to me in my LP. Yeah, I think I, I think <laughs> I actually did that exact thing. Yeah, classic. It's so it's like oh my god, you need to know. But once you do know, and once you remember, then then you'll remember. And and yeah, you said the 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 um, you retain that knowledge of like oh before I get on that platform, let me go get this crate. Let me do the yeah. bonus round, get the other crate. Okay, we're good. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that's that. right. No, it's it's a, tr it's a tricky one. It's certainly a tricky one. <laughs> but all in all, like for, for how, I guess you could say deep the story does go. Um, not that it's like episodic or cinematic, but like um, it's one of the more detailed crash plots I've seen, I think ever really like they, yeah, you, ever. everyone. Yeah. Everyone has like their different emotions. They've got the you know, the plots going. They're they're the the villain betrayals and stuff like that. And these characters you didn't think were even going to pop up in the game, and then they've got like a little role. And it all felt like like a like an animated movie, and it was really cool. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I was yeah, I'm a big fan of the story. Very excited to see where they go next. Obviously, um, the you know the Uka Uka tease very exciting. Um, and yeah i'm ex i'm excited to see what happens um this year i don't think we'll get like an announcement for crash 5 this year whatever it's going to be will be to do with player versus player maybe spyro whatever but yeah don't think we need like another platform announcement yet but you know should be interesting regardless i think we'll get another platforming game at some point because i i feel like if it's still gonna be toys for bob then they already well they should very well know now at this point how what our it. feedback yeah. is exactly and yeah. then what they no, that's the true yeah i do think we'll get one um just not not yeah i think they want crash 4 just to, to marinate and continue sure. to sell just like insane trilogy and uh nitro fuel both sold and still sell to this day mm -hmm. and i forgot who it was that asked me whether it was cg or teal i forgot who it was really but um one of them asked me in a previous episode, are you confident in Toys for Bob staying on developing Crash? And look at what we were saying earlier. It wasn't Toys for Bob. It was uh, Vivi with um, mm -hmm. uh, Imaginators. But seeing that... I never hated Toys for Bob for making Skylanders and the way they, they integrated Spyro into it. But I was like, they made some questionable decisions. But yes. seeing how... That's how I felt towards their games back then, and then seeing what they've how they've handled Sparta with Reignited, and then seeing Crash now, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, they've learned, they've paid attention, and they've yeah. learned. So, yeah. oh, definitely, definitely, and a lot of them are actually fans as well, and you know, yeah, yeah, like while while it's still rocky here and there, again, the difficulty stuff in Crash or whatever, there's stuff that can still be ironed out with these games that they've been doing with Crash and Spyro, but they do get it, and they've let us know that they get it, and that's the best part about it. They're not bullshitting anymore, they're not messing around, they're not trying to, like, do it for, you know, a paycheck or anything, or they're pouring everything they've got into Crash and Spyro, and that's so cool. Yeah. So I can't wait to see what they have next. In yeah, store no, for... me too. Me too. Very excited. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk about last minute? <laughs> um, no, I think, yeah, I think we've covered practically everything in like like 80 minutes. It's been very good. Um, but yeah, it, it, I, I definitely think that, as, as we said, go, you know, back to the start, very exciting time to be a fan. Um, I definitely high, highlight, if there's anything I promote myself i would te definitely suggest checking out um you know the crash and spyro hacks that are released um you know and mods 
um, you know, check out like type Inspire Reignite Trilogy mods, you'll get a bunch of links and you, you probably get some of my videos pop up. Crash Bet, Crash Form mods and stuff like that. You're going to see these custom levels. We're going to see new skins, characters. That's really exciting. The fan community has always been great. I've always been a big part of that, uh, helping promote it. And um, I think that's what I am. You know, I love all the, the new announcements coming on the run is, is fun and they're doing a lot of great lore stuff with that and attention yes. to detail but if you're looking for stuff done by the fans that feels really professional then yeah modding the modding and hacking scene is definitely something to check out yes i will more than definitely put all your stuff in the description so people can see so go ahead and check that out if you're on youtube and just listening yep. and you can check out more of christopher's stuff uh, thank you very much for having me and thanks for yeah in advance if you check out the channel yeah, no, thanks for being on again, man. It was really, really fun getting to talk to you about this stuff. It's awesome. Thanks very much, Mark. And uh, yeah, um, thank you everyone for listening to this as well. All right, we'll see you guys later. Take care. Uh -huh.